Hi, in this video we're looking at the factor label method. Sometimes this is referred to as dimensional analysis and it's just the same thing. The purpose of this method is to convert. That's it. We have something expressed in one unit and we want to express it in a different unit. We're going to use the factor label method to help us do that. So the factor label method is just a process used to convert between units. And sometimes this can be a little scary for students that don't really know how fractions work. So let me first kind of back up and just show you this. 2x divided by x. It's an obvious thing that's going on here, but if you've got an x on the top of a fraction and on the bottom, you can cancel it out because anything divided by itself is 1 which means it's irrelevant mathematically. Um, that same concept is true here. If I had 2x times 1 over x, well, that's just the same thing as having 2x over x. I still can cancel out x, and I'm still just left with 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, this concept is integral to understanding how the factor label method works. Factor label method has you starting with a unit that you don't want and you wanna cancel that unit out. And so you use a, a fraction to do that. This fraction is called a conversion factor and in particular it's set up so that your undesired unit is on the bottom of the fraction. And so conversion factors are uh, equivalent expressions. They're equivalent numerical relationships between two units. Now you're familiar with conversion factors but I'll just give you a couple examples. One foot equals 12 inches, or one pound is 453.6 grams. Or maybe you didn't know this one, but two cups is equal to 473 milliliters. Although their numbers don't match, one isn't equal to 12 and two isn't equal to 473, overall their meanings are equal. One foot is equal to 12 inches. And because of this relationship, even though the numbers are different, but their meanings are exactly the same, we can use these interchangeably in a fraction because it's the same thing on the top of a fraction as it is on the bottom. And so let me give you an example using this conversion factor here. The problem says convert six cups to milliliters. Well, I wanna start with what I wanna get rid of. I wanna get rid of cups and turn it into milliliters. Some people like to put six cups over one, uh, I personally don't, but it's completely up to you. The only benefit to doing this is that it keeps your starting information on the top of the fraction uh, setup that we'll have. So six cups times, I wanna bring in my conversion factor, but right now it's set up so that cups won't cancel. I wanna flip this around. That way, look, cups will cancel out because cups as a unit is on the top and on the bottom. Just like X on the top and the bottom of fractions cancel out, so do the units. So now I'm just left with milliliters and I can calculate the numbers. So I always tell my students, do the math first with the units, dragging the numbers along. Once you have the unit math figured out, then you can just do the math with the numbers. Now in this, technically we're supposed to have one significant figure, but for the, the sake of walking you through factor label method, I think it's good that we just leave this as 1,419 milliliters. Let's do another example. The current exchange rate between US dollars and Canadian dollars is one USD equals 1.32 CAD. That's US dollars to Canadian dollars. How many Canadian dollars is equal to 80 quarters? Well, we need uh, some information first. The problem doesn't say anything about quarters, but we need a conversion factor for quarters to US dollars. We know that though, there are four quarters in one US dollar. Um, and then this is my other conversion factor here. One US dollar, and this is true of today's date, I uh, just Googled this, is 1.32 Canadian dollars. So in this problem, I'm gonna use two conversion factors. And let me show you how I'd set that up. I wanna start with this information because 80 is what I wanna convert into Canadian dollars. 80 quarters into Canadian dollars, and these are the two relationships I'm gonna to use to help me do that. So I start by writing 80 quarters. It's really important that you put the factor with the label, hence the name factor label method. Uh, some people like to put this over one. If that's you, go for it. And then you wanna multiply by a fraction. 
This fraction is one of our conversion factors. The first one's always the easiest to figure out. See how I have quarters here? I wanna get rid of quarters. And the only way to do that is to put quarters on the bottom. So now I go and look at my conversion factors. Where's quarters? Oh, it's here. So I'm gonna put four, because that's the number, the, the factor that goes with the label, four quarters, equaling one US dollar. Uh, I like to cross off the conversion factors as I use them because it kind of narrows down what I have left to work on. And then I also cross off the units that I've canceled out. If I was to stop doing math now, I would have how many dollars is equal to 80 quarters? US dollars, but I wanna know Canadian dollars. So here's what I do, I can keep going. I wanna put in another fraction for this other conversion factor. One US dollar is on the bottom. Now this is coming from my second conversion factor here and 1.32 Canadian dollars is on the top. I cross off what I've canceled out, US dollars in this case, and I'm left in Canadian dollars. What's nice about the factor label method set up is that whatever's not crossed off is what you've solved for. So now that I've done the math in canceling with the units, notice this kind of zigzag here, I'm ready to do the math with the numbers. So here I go, 80, get into my phone here, 80 times one, which doesn't do anything, times 1.32, divided by one, divided by four, divided by 1.00, gives me 26.40 Canadian dollars. Now, it's always a good idea to go back and look at digits when you're done with a, uh, a calculation here. 80 quarters is not a measurement. It's a, an exact number. We counted out 80 quarters. So this here, I'm just gonna kinda leave alone. 26.40 Canadian dollars. Ready for another example? Here it is. This says convert 16.5 yards per minute into meters per second. So this is interesting, these per, per units. I could write 16.5 yards per minute like this, but I think when you're converting, it's probably better that you break these into a fraction. Here's what I mean. 16.5 yards per one minute. This means that a minute of time is equal to 16.5 yards of distance. Now, I needed to actually do a couple different conversions here. I have to convert yards into meters and I have to convert minutes into seconds. So for something like this, I recommend you take out table seven or any reference table. You could Google some of these conversion factors too. In our class, table seven's in your reference tables and it's got a listing of the most common conversion factors. For this one, we're looking at both distance and we're looking at time. So let's first convert yards. So I'm gonna start with a fraction. I'm gonna put yards right underneath because I wanna cancel out yards by and then I want to find yards over here, distance. One yard, one yard is equal to 0.9144 meters. 0 0.9144 meters. Okay, let's call a timeout for a second. If I were to stop, I'd be in meters per minute. I want meters per second. So I have to convert minutes into seconds. Now here's something we haven't seen yet. What happens if what you want to convert is on the bottom of the fraction? Well, on your conversion factor, you're just going to put minutes up on top. That still cancels it out because look, on the bottom, on the top, gone. So I'm going from minutes to seconds. Let's see, one minute is 60 seconds. We probably know that right off the top of our heads. And so now look, everything's canceled out except for the units that I want meters per second. So I'm ready just to do the math with the numbers. 16 and a half times 0.9144 times one divided by one divided by one divided by 60. And those ones you can probably leave off. I'm just doing it just to do diligence here. And uh, 0 0.251 meters per second three significant figures there because I started with three significant figures. 
You always want to finish with the same number of significant figures that you start with. None of these conversion factors are going to be good for looking at significant figures. Um, so I've successfully converted uh, yards per minute into meters per second. There is lots to practice with factor label method, and the more you practice with this, the better you'll feel about it and the easier it'll come to you. Certainly a useful method for converting, and in chemistry, although even beyond, there's a lot of converting between units that we do. Thank you.